guys, welcome back to Wong Chemistry channel. For this video, it's the second part of your Lewis structure. And for this video, we will only discuss one thing, which is your dative covalent bond. By using your Lewis structure, we are going to learn what is actually dative covalent bond and also how do we form dative covalent bond. So what is actually dative covalent bond and what makes a dative covalent bond different from a normal covalent bond? A dative covalent bond is a covalent bond in which the shared pair of bonding electron is provided by only one of the bonding atoms. So what is actually mean by this? For an example, I have a bond over here between my A and my X. So everybody knows that. In a bond, there are two electrons. So this is what we call bonding electron. So bonding electron means the electron that's sitting in the bond between the two atoms. So in a normal covalent bond, all right, a standard covalent bond is your A will donate one electron and then your X will donate one electron to be shared. So you have your A and your X over here, one of the electron is from A, one of the electron is from X. That is your covalent bond. So what will make it different when it's a dative covalent bond? Dative covalent bond means the bonding electron is provided by only one of the bonding atom. In the other words, the two electrons that you have over here in the bond between A and X must come from either A or X. So it can be both of this electron is actually coming from A. All right, A is the one that sharing the electron to X. So X is not sharing any of the electron. Okay, so that is what we mean by dative covalent bond. So your A right now is the one that sharing both of the electron to the X. And that is what we call dative covalent bond. And we can use this symbol, all right, the arrow symbol over here to show the dative covalent bond that form between your atom. So the arrow must be from the one donating two electron to the one receiving both of the electron. Okay, so the main difference between the dative covalent bond and your normal covalent bond is the both electron in the bond must come from only one person. All right, both of the electron must come from only one bonding atom. Make sense? So next question is, how do we form this dative covalent bond? What do you need to be able to form a dative covalent bond? We need something called lone pair. Okay, since that only one of the bonding atom, only one person will contribute a pair of electron. So the pair of electron will normally be the lone pair. All right, the pair of electron that will be donated to share with another bonding atom will be the lone pair. Okay, so one of the simplest example that I can give to you is involving your ammonia and H3. So if you remember, the Lewis structure of the ammonia will be something like this, where in the ammonia, your nitrogen will be bonded singly to the hydrogen. And then the nitrogen in the ammonia will be having a lone pair over that. And then this ammonia can react with your H positive, the hydrogen ion that have loses its electron. So what happened over that? If you want to form a bond, H plus have no electron already. This guy have no electron at any point. So how do I form a bond? Simple. The electron in the bond will be both given out by the nitrogen lone pair. All right, so the nitrogen lone pair will take out its lone pair and share the two electrons with the H+. And then you will be forming a new bond between the nitrogen and the H positive. And the new bond that form is here. All right, this is the new bond that between the nitrogen in the ammonia by using its lone pair to the H positive. And by that in mind, your product right now is your NH4+. Plus. So make sure you have the bracket with the positive charge. Your ammonia NH3 plus H plus, you'll be forming your NH4 plus. And during this formation of NH4 plus, you will then form a dative covalent bond. 
the dative covalent bond will be formed because this lone pair of the nitrogen in the ammonia will be then shared with the H positive ion. So you form a dative covalent bond over here where both of this electron is actually coming from the same bonding atom. So both of this electron is coming from the nitrogen. And that is the reason why we call this thing as your dative covalent bond. Okay, both of the electron in the bonding come from the same bonding atom. That is dative covalent bond. All right. So NH4 plus is the example that I just showed you just now. We have a few more compounds that holding that active covalent bond. For example, your H3O plus over here. So your H3O plus also actually having that active covalent bond. Next, your NH3BF3. Your NH3BF3 also having a that active covalent bond. Next, you have your Al2Cl6 also having a that active covalent bond. And we will look at the discussion for the H3O+, the NH3BF3, and also Al2Cl6. We will look at which one is the dative covalent bond between all these bonds. Okay, so the first example that you have, H3O+. Before you do anything, you should actually write the formation of H3O+. You need to know how is your H3O+, coming from. So the formation of H3O+, is coming from your water react with the H positive, forming your H3O+. So how do we start? You always start by drawing the Lewis structure of both of this. So we have talked about Lewis structure in the previous video, your part 1 video. Make sure you check that out and learn how to draw the Lewis structure. It's very important. So we are going to draw the Lewis structure of water. The total valence electron of water over here is pretty simple. Hydrogen 2 times 1, oxygen 6 times 1. So you have your 2, you have your 6, you have 8 valence electron. Pretty simple. So this 8 valence electron need to be arranged accordingly into your water. So your oxygen as the central atom holding your H, holding your H over here. So minus out 4, you have 4 left. So the 4 electron left will be placed in your central atom because your hydrogen is already duplex. So settle. So that is the Lewis structure of your water reacting with your H+. I hope you can see by now that we need the dative covalent bond. And obviously, your dative covalent bond will come from either one of this lone pair because you only have one H+. So only need one lone pair. Make sure you have the arrow showing from the lone pair to the H positive. So make sure it's a double-headed arrow showing that it's a sharing. Dative covalent bond is still a covalent bond that we share electron, but both of the electron is shared out by the same bonding atom. All right, the same person is sharing out the electron. So you form a new bond over here where your hydrogen and oxygen in the water remain unchanged. The lone pair in the oxygen remain unchanged, but you form a new bond over here with the H, and this is your H3O+. plus? Remember to put down the charge, okay? And this is how your dative covalent bond is formed from the oxygen sharing two electrons with the H positive ion. So that is our dative covalent bond that form. So it's pretty simple when you want to show the formation of dative covalent bond. Make sure you know that your compound is coming from who. And then you must start off with the Lewis structure. Identify the lone pair that will be shared with the ion and show the dative covalent bond. That's it. Simple. Next, we have NH3BF3. So NH3BF3 is formed because you have your ammonia react with your BF3. So let's see. Very, very quickly, drawing the Lewis structure of your ammonia. So total valence electron from ammonia over here is 5 from the nitrogen and then 3, so you have 8. So for the ammonia, is your nitrogen holding 3 hydrogen, singly bonded, 
So your minus 6 over there, you have 2 electrons left that will be on the central atom nitrogen. So that is your ammonia. Done. So for the BF3, your total valence electron for your BF3 will be boron 3. Fluorine is 7 times 3. So you have 21. Over there, you have 24 electrons for the BF3. So for the BF3, you need to draw single bond with the F first. From there, you minus 6. Therefore, you have 18 electron left. The 18 electron will be used to octet the fluorine. So make sure all the fluorine is octet at this moment. We learned this in how to draw your Lewis structure. This is just a recap. So you minus your electron out and you have no electron left. So this is the Lewis structure for your ammonia and also BF3. Let's see which lone pair will actually use to form the dative covalent bond. The one in the nitrogen or the one in the fluorine. You need to identify who is not achieving octet in here. Boron is the guy that is not achieving octet. It's an incomplete octet with only 6 electrons around it. Can you see that? Since your boron over here is an incomplete octet, therefore, boron is the one who will need more electron. Since boron needs more electron, the partner, which is your NH3, having a lone pair in the nitrogen. So what happened is, the lone pair in the nitrogen will be shared out to the boron over here. So when you share the electron with the boron, at the same time, the boron will achieve octet. Okay, so the product that you will form, all the bond that have no changes shall remain the same. So you have your N, you have your H, you have your H. They shall remain the same, no changes. But you form a new bond, which is the lone pair from the nitrogen to the boron over here. Okay? And then the boron holding the fluorine. So the bond with the fluorine also has no changes. Everything there should remain the same. Just copy. Alright? We only show where is the new bond. The rest that have no changes will remain the same. So, all this remain the same. And obviously, you can see that your new bond is formed between your nitrogen and boron. And the arrow is going from the nitrogen to the boron. It means the lone pair is given out by the nitrogen to the boron. That's why the arrow is from nitrogen to boron. Okay? And that is our dative covalent bond that form. Okay? If you want to indicate the bond, that is how we indicate the bond. So, your dative covalent bond over here is formed because the lone pair of the nitrogen in the ammonia is shared to the boron in the BF3. So, you form a new dative covalent bond between that. Simple. Alright? Easy. Next, and also the last example for this dative covalent bond is your Al2Cl6. So, how is Al2Cl6 formed? Simple. Al2Cl6 formed because of 2AlCl3. So, let's calculate the total valence electron for your Al2Cl3 quickly. So, you have your aluminium over here is 3. Your chlorine over here is 7 times 3. You have 21. So, you have 24 total valence electron. And I need 2 of the aluminium Cl3. Draw the first one. Al bonded singly with 3 chlorine. Okay, so minus out 6. You have 18 left. Octet the terminal atom as always. So after you octet the terminal atom, you have used up all 18 electrons. So you have nothing left. So that is the Lewis structure of your AlCl3. But we need 2 of them. So you will have your AlCl3 plus your AlCl3 one more. We need two of them to form one product. Okay? So when you are done with both of them, you can see over here, the one that is not achieving octet is your aluminium. So you can see both of your aluminium over here is your incomplete octet. Incomplete octet means we are not having enough. Alright? You only have six electrons around the Aluminium, both of this is your incomplete octet. 
So what do we need to do is we need to make it a fact by forming dative covalent bond. So who will be donating lone pair? Simple. By looking at the structure, you already know in the entire structure, there is only one person having lone pair, chlorine. So the lone pair will be donated from the chlorine. The chlorine over here will be sharing out that lone pair with the aluminium over here. Alright, so the aluminium at this bottom structure is now octet. How about the aluminium here? Simple. The aluminium on this structure will be taking the lone pair of the chlorine from another structure to make it octet. So you will have a sharing between this chlorine to the aluminium to make it octet. Alright, so chlorine is the one that donating its lone pair to form the dative covalent bond. Alright, so before we proceed, just a kind reminder, the one that having no changes like this, the one that having no changes, the one that having no changes, the one that having no changes over here must remain the same. So the product that you will form over here, the aluminium, having two chlorine that have no changes, make sure the one that have no changes shall remain the same. But what happened to another chlorine? So the chlorine over here right now having changes. The chlorine still have this two lone pair, but one of the lone pair right now is now shared out to the aluminium. So it's now shared with the aluminium. Okay, but you need to remember this aluminium having two chlorine that have no changes. So just copy it, all right? Don't think too much. Just basically copy the structure that you have knowing that they won't have changes. All right, see that? So that is your first dative covalent bond. The second dative covalent bond is about this chlorine. So this chlorine right now donated one of its lone pair to another aluminium up there. But the two lone pair that have no changes shall again remain the same. So I hope right now you can see your dative covalent bond already. The first dative covalent bond over here is between this lone pair of chlorine, share out the lone pair with the aluminium. So that is your first covalent bond. Okay, your second covalent bond is the lone pair in this chlorine, share out the electron with the aluminium. So this is your another dative covalent bond from the chlorine to the aluminium. So in your Al2Cl6, how many dative covalent bond you form? You are now forming two dative covalent bond. Both dative covalent bond is the lone pair donated by the chlorine, all right, and shared with the aluminium of the opposite compound, okay? They cannot share to the same person. So they're sharing it to the opposite person, all right? So they're sharing it to the opposite compound. That's why you need two AlCl3 to form this two dative covalent bond. So that's it for dative covalent bond. So make sure you already know what is dative covalent bond. So by that in mind, you need to show the formation of dative covalent bond by drawing the Lewis structure of your reactant first. You need to know how to draw the Lewis structure of the reactant, identify the lone pair, identify who will be accepting the lone pair then only you will know where the dative covalent bond is formed. All right? If you have any question about dative covalent bond, drop it in the comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Remember to like the video and subscribe my channel for more videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again in the next video.